Hey guys, Near Fear here, and today I've got a driver interview with one of the drivers in our series, Dr. Tesla, who happens to be third in championship points so far. So we're going to drive over to his uh, apartment complex over in the closer edge of downtown Los Santos in the one of the high rises here we're pulling up to his car just right behind it and we're going to ask him a few questions about the series and how the championship's going for him so i hope you guys enjoy this little interview in between me and him and be sure to subscribe for more content similar to this for the 2015 muscle car championship and i'll catch you guys in the next video peace hey. What are you trying to do? Gonna, I, well, I tried to sit in the other table and it didn't work. An evening at Tesla's. Hey, no, 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 getting what's up. <laughs> An evening at Tesla's, starring near fear. Hey, one one glass of wine isn't getting liquored up. Okay, fine, we'll drink some. I love how I have all this fancy kitchen stuff and I don't cook. <laughs> and we can't use it. Okay. So, um, how's it going, Tesla? It is doing fine. That's that's good. That why did it sit me over at the wrong side of the couch? I wanted to be over here. Now, th we're gonna start off with a simple question this one's quite easy this is just to break the ice a little bit um which do you prefer oversteer or understeer oversteer within reason explain that a little bit just a little bit within reason as in i don't like the car the accident of the car it's not at every turn all the time. Okay, fair enough. I, I do, I do prefer oversteer to where if I have to, I can kick the rear of the car out with some ease, but not constant. So just enough, but not over the edge. Yes. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um. So, what do you think of the car regulations for this season? I do find them fair. Um, of course, it does put some cars being more advantage at certain tracks than others. Sure, sure. But that's going to happen in any race series. That is true. Um, how do you feel about your current car's performance? Like, How well do you feel that it fits in the current running of cars? My current car, it excels well in the corners, and that is where I make up most of my ground. Um, however, as with the last race, not the Desert Grand Prix, the car showed lack of power on the straight, which is more of a top speed issue due to the factoring of the track. However, since the schedule doesn't seem to look like there's a lot many more of those tracks left, I feel my car will be doing very fine for the rest of the season. I um, mean, how do you find yourself driving around this deficiency in power? As in, like, my driving style and whatnot? That too, but how do you think you have to make up for it for the loss of power with your car? How do I have to make up for my loss of... It's more of a loss of top speed. Um, I find myself concentrating really hard on trying to make up ground in the turn. How so? Is it like um, in the entry or is it on the exit? On the, on the entry and on the exit, the thing with the Sabre is it does have a lot of grip and a lot of torque. So... It surprisingly will go around the turns very fast, and that torque does allow it to get out of the turns fast. So it has the acceleration, it's just you're missing the 
that final that final drive at the end. Yeah, it has the acceleration out of the turn, just coming up a long straight hit. When it comes to an issue of needing the at top speed at the car lap. Alright, alright. Well there is um there's some good news for you at the uh, end of this. You are currently third in the season standings, um, with Nears DNF and Ho Harris failing to qualify in the last race. How does it feel to know that you're on the top step going into the fourth round? Well, one of the top steps, anyway. It feels good. It feels good. Um, I have a feeling I could be higher if I would have been there for the first race. Um. But I have a good feeling, and especially with how close the last race was, I have a feeling it's going to be a fight for the championship from near the end of the season. That last race is going to decide who's going to come out on top. All right, so down to the wire. Um, yeah. All right. This has been a pretty close championship so far. Even with the DNFs, how do you feel yourself fitting in the standings at closer to the end of the year? Well, as I said, because of, based on what we saw last race, the cars are on a track that is not all about top speed. The cars are going to be so close and the drivers are so close together that it's going to be who can be the most consistent the most consistent and being able to keep up that fast pace so I feel my car can make can stay on the top of the standings and possibly take the championship however it's going to take a lot of work and a lot of just concentration to get there. All right, all right. Um, any competitors to look out for this far in the season for our viewers? Oh, definitely, definitely. There's even even with me and Sir. There's four drivers that at any time are uh, going to be fighting for the lead at any one point in time during so the race. So four next. potential race winners. The, yeah, there's, you know, Stalin, O'Harris, Du, and then there's me all fighting for that. And then you can't forget about Rockstar Man because he's, he's very capable of being that wild card to just throw in there in any he's race. He's consistently been the point so far each race. Of course, he's also second in the championship, so I guess that's what consistency will get you. Yep. Um, rain so far has been an issue for some of the drivers in this championship. Any comment on that, given the high torque output and the muscle cars that we're all driving? That, that's another reason why I like my Saber a lot is because my Saber has a lot, as I said, a lot of grip in the turns, and that really shows in the rain. Yes, there's a lack of grip compared to when it's dry, but the the car still has plenty of traction to still be able to run fast without being able to overstep the car's boundaries. The other competitors, they well, definitely need to stay on their toes in the rain. Um, I, I think it's an interesting factor with the rain playing into it because it definitely it definitely mixes up and shows what the drivers are definitely capable of from the grip that they tend to rely on for most of the race isn't buried in one. It shows what they can do when they have to take a step back. Alright, so it's more of a trial and error, catch and not crash type thing? Mm-hmm. Alright. 
There's also been an issue of slipstream on the shorter tracks. How are some of the, what are some of the ways that you've gone about driving around this issue of slipstream and the immediate boost the it tends to give the, the engine? The main, the main thing with the slipstream is if you're caught on it, caught with it on the straightaway, it's not that hazardous of a situation. The the main hazard of the slipstream, especially on a shorter course, is coming up to a turn. You the person who's caught in the slipstream has to make sure they break very early, yeah. or else they're going to miss or they're going to miss the turn and smack smash in the barrier. And if it's a depending on how tight and technical the course is, that could end up in a yellow and or, and or possibly that could finish the race for the driver. Alright. Any comments on slipstreams in the winding turns on any of the circuits? Once again, that's an issue that is you have to be careful. Um, I found myself completely letting the off the gas or sometimes even hitting the brakes when I've gotten in situations where I've been affected by slipstream in a spot where I don't want it. Alright. Let's see here, let's see here. You're facing all these questions so far. Um, I think that might just be about it. And wait before I forget. How do you think the tire regulations have affected car performance? Um... I don't think the tire regulations have affected it too much at all. Due to the, especially due to the fact that the tire regulations are... The universal the, compound. Well, it's the universal compound along with the issue of that they are the tires that originally came onto the car. Yeah. So it's, it's not an issue of the car is not used to the tires. If the cars are used to them, it's just there, there is excess power and the driver just has to compensate for it, whether it's something such as getting on the gas a little later or braking a little earlier. Which is going to be an issue when it comes to adding um, power to really any vehicle. Alright. There's been a new pit stop rule put in place. I know um, that was also implemented in the last race that you ran in with Jay Stalin, but drivers are now required to make three stops during each race. Um, what do you think some of the best strategies are for getting? some of these pit stops out of the way and possibly gain yourself a lead at the end of the race. The best pit stops are, the, the best pit stop strategy is really to divide the amount of laps into thirds and try to around each third of the race. However, say you're five laps away from your plane pit stop and a yellow comes out. That's a good time to take a pit. You may lose a position, but you're not going to lose any ground. And the way you've lost your position there is that person did pit, and the person in front, most likely, especially early on in the race, is going to have to pit eventually. Yeah. And they're probably going to pit sometime around in the next five to ten laps in that case if they haven't pit already. So you're going to make up that ground anyway. Come near towards the end of the race, it, that's when the pit stops really are going to make a difference. Um, especially when you're in the lead and your car is a little dinged up, but you've already had your three pit stops. When a yellow comes out, you're faced with a real huge dilemma with, do you want to stay out and stay in the lead, or pit, get a fresh car, 
and risk losing the lead but having that fresh car to last the lead of the race and being on making sure you have a pristine car over the rest of the pack. So it's really not really, not until a little mm, as I said later on in the race, I'd say about three quarters of the way the race tour has pits really become an issue and it's you definitely want to have one you don't want to use up all three pits. I mean you can if you want to, but you want to try to avoid that before that later section of the race. Because the chances of someone having a pristine car all through the race is not very high. Well, very slim to know. Alright. Fair enough. We've got some new drivers coming in from the last two races that we've seen. Any new tips for the new drivers or any new drivers that would like to come into the series? New tips for new drivers? Um, well, I would have to say, um, I, I do enjoy seeing new drivers because that means there's, you know, obviously more people wanting to race and you know, that's always a good sign. And more people in a race, normally the more exciting it is. And any tips I have for those new drivers is when you're racing, it's more important to learn how to drive the car than anything else. You could be used to driving a sports car, but if you're, you can't drive these cars like you can a sports car. You have to learn, and the driving technique between each of these muscle cars is different between each car. So you need to learn how to drive your car and don't worry about having to take a step back. And it may not feel like you're going as fast, but if you just take a time to take a step back and just find your rhythm and just work on, you know, making hitting your points in the turns, then you're gonna find your time getting faster. Don't try and push the car to its limits right out of the box. Never a good That's idea. how you're going to end up over pushing the car and end up crashing. Those extra pit stops do, do end up costing you in the end. Yeah. Alright, well I believe that sums up my interview for the time being. Any questions that you have, Dr. Tesla? Anything you want to explain to the audience? Um, no, no questions at this point, other than I am looking forward to the, to running the next race. Alright. Good talking with you, Tesla. Nice talking with you as well. <laughs>